Hey, it's Jason here. And in this one, I want to look at real tax return documents so you can understand how to analyze companies when you're looking to potentially acquire them. This is great for doing diligence. It's great for looking to see whether or not this is an investment you want to make. Let's get right into it. Let's rock and roll. Let's do a screen share and let's do this thing. So I put together redacted tax returns. Let's dive in. So let's go to this first page. Okay. This page right here is basically the page you're going to see at the very beginning of any tax return doc that you're going to look at for a company. This happens to be an S corp. You can see that here it happens to be for the taxable year of 2019. I redacted the sensitive information here. That's what that big black mark is. And let's go right into it. I mean, first you see over here on the right-hand column, 8,142,000 and change. Okay. That is basically, let me zoom out a tad. That is basically the revenue for the company in this given year. They call it gross receipt or sales. Okay. So that's the total sales. Next, you have in line two, the cost of goods sold, which they had 4.32 million in cost of goods sold. This business did. Cost of goods sold is usually what you would consider labor and material, or it's basically the cost it takes to produce the product or service itself. Not back office expenses needed to fulfill the product or service, but the core manufacturing or delivering of a product or service. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what cost of goods sold are, which then means gross profit, which you see is line three here, the gross profit was line three, 3.8 million. Okay. So that is what we have here at the top part. And you see here one through six, look at this. It's categorized as income. You see that right there. Okay, great. Line seven through 20 are really all the other base deductions that makes up a business. These are the basic and necessary back office expenses, or maybe they are, maybe they're not necessary. We'll dive into that in a minute as far as whether or not these expenses are truly necessary for the operation of the business. But these are the core expenses that the operator or the business owner, I should say, wrote off through the business. Let's start with line seven, compensation of officers. Officers basically are shareholders of the company, and they had $306,000 worth of payouts to officers. We'll see uh, what other forms of payouts an officer can elect to take later on in this video, but that's number seven. Line eight are the salaries and wages of the back office. These are like, this is like the bookkeeper. This is the HR person. This is if there's a salesperson, any other person that's behind the scenes, not generating revenue directly or not installing something if it's a service or not manufacturing something directly, but fulfilling uh, those services or sales um, through the back office. That's your salaries and wages here, line eight, they had 628,000, okay? So repairs and maintenance, this if you own the building, they didn't have any repairs or maintenance. A bad debt, that's if they were unable to collect. Um, that's line 10, they didn't have anything for bad debt. Line 11 is rents, their rents were 36,000, that's really cheap, they've got a nice, uh, I mean, for this amount of revenue, over 8 million, I mean, to pay only 36,000 in rent, they probably have a little hole in the wall, uh, but that's okay. They're obviously making it work because we're going to see here, they're doing multi-million dollars a year in net income. I digress. Line 12 is taxes and licenses. They had about 30,000, just under $30,000 in line 12 here. Great. Line 13 is interest. Interest is basically interest expense from uh, loans. They're not levered. As you can see here, they're paying no interest. Line 13, that's a good sign when analyzing a business. Depreciation, they're not taking any depreciation. All right, we could have a whole other video. In fact, I do have other videos on my YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash Jason Paul Rogers about depreciation. So that's really an important one for many businesses, but there's nothing going on here. Advertising expense, very little, only about $8,000. You see that here in line 16. Pension, profit splitting, uh, profit sharing, et cetera. Nothing. Line 18, employee benefit program, nothing. And then you're going to see here other deductions. See statement one. We're going to go to that in a minute. Okay, but basically the total deductions they were able to deliver were 1.57, a 1.517 million. Okay, excuse me, 1.1, 1 1.517 million. Excuse me, I'm having a bit of a tongue twister there, which basically means you have the gross profits, which is here, this 3.821 less line 20, which are the other expenses, other deductions. And you have line 21 of the tax return, a, an item or a line I always talk about. What does line 21 show on a business's tax returns? Here, they had over $2 million of taxable income in this given year. I mean, this was a great financial year for this business, especially given they only did a little over $8 million in revenue. I mean, they're taking over 25% to the bottom line. That's a fair play. Great deal there. 
that's basically the first page of the tax return. Let's go and uh, go deeper now. This is the next page I wanted to bring up. This is actually page four of the tax return. Okay, you see the page number here in the top right hand corner. This is where you look at the balance sheet that they report to the tax returns. Now, why is this so important? It's important, firstly, we love tax returns as business buyers and as, as uh, investors and in businesses, more so than P&Ls and balance sheets, because tax returns are what you submit to the federal government. So it takes a lot of courage and chutzpah. And, you know, it's unlikely that you're going to falsify tax returns. That's really the key. It's unlikely you're going to falsify tax returns. Okay, so what we're looking at here is this is the balance sheet of the, of the business in this given taxable year. You see at the beginning of the taxable year, they had over 1.5 million in cash. By the end of the taxable year, they had over 2.2 million in cash. You see end of tax year, 2.2 million in change. This is for the cash. Okay, then you look at AR, age receivables. At the beginning of the year, they had 1.9 million in age receivables. This is monies that they're owed for services rendered. Um, but at the end of the taxable year, they got that way down, down to 362,000. That's meaningful, a meaningful decline. Um, less allowances for bad debt. I'd want to talk to my accountant about that, but this is interesting here. Something to investigate here. They didn't report any bad debt on the prior page, but they're saying less allowances for bad debt. Are they reporting bad debt? I don't think so, but it's worth investigating. This is where you want to work with a CPA. I am not a CPA. I am not formally giving financial advice. I'm an entrepreneur that's sharing some insight about how to look at these tax returns. I digress. Okay, so that was really the main thing I wanted to show there. It's just here, you're able to see cash at the beginning of the year, cash at the end of the year. You're able to see AR. You're able to see some important information here. And we're going to move on to the next page. Let me see if I can do that directly. No, I got to bounce out and go back in and go to page three. Page three is actually page five. Okay, I just, I sourced, if you look, I have six pages here we're going to go through today. Okay, this is the third one I wanted to go through with you. It's actually page five of the tax return for this return. It'll be a different page, but depending on how extensive their tax return is. But what this is here, this is an important one that shows the net income of the business. That was line 21 of the first page of the tax return. So that's where it shows almost 2.3 million in net income. It shows, you know, and then here's a real key one. Okay, it shows the distributions, line seven. Okay, they did $565,000 in distributions in this taxable year. Okay, if we go back for a minute to the first page, remember this page? Remember how I showed you line seven, the compensation of officers, that they did $306,000 in traditional you know, W-2 payout? Okay, great. Well, that wasn't the only way they paid themselves. They also paid themselves over $500,000 in distributions. That's a direct distribution or they'll pay taxes later. Okay, so combined between the 565 and the 306, the owners in this business, and we'll see there's actually only one owner. So the owner paid themselves over 500, or excuse me, over $800,000, 300,000 here and 565 here. So almost $900,000 uh, in, in payout. That was, that was actually paid to the owner in this given year. The business earned about 2.3 million. That's what this net income is here. And we also saw that, of course, um, in the ordinary business income that you see right here. Slight deviation, it looks like 2.3 over here versus here, they're showing 2.297, but basically 2.3 million in net income that was taxable. And then you see how much the owners paid themselves. So I just thought this was important here so that you can get the true nature of how much the owner paid himself or herself. When you look at the first page with the compensation of officers, line seven, combined with, at this point, it's the fifth page, and then you go down here to the distribution section and you look at that, okay? So that's meaningful. We're trying to get a sense of how much the owner is paying him or herself in this business. Let's go to the next page. And this is another big one, the shareholder information. You want to know who are the shareholders, Okay. For whatever reason, it's not showing what page this is, but you can find this on any tax return. It's the compensation of officers, all right? And here, I'm not going to obviously show the, the name of this officer for this business, but what I can tell you is there's only one, and they have 100% of the common stock. And they show, remember, there was that 306000 in, in distribution? Or excuse me, that was W-2 payout. Remember, again, going back, sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place here. But remember the compensation of officers, the 306,000? Well, bing, or it's right there. So they paid, this individual paid him or herself 306,000 in traditional 
payout that given year. And you see it right there. There you have it. Okay, let's go to the next one. And then this is the this is a really important page here. These are the other deductions to go back to this first page. Remember on this first page here, there was the other deductions, section 19, other deductions. Remember how that was $509,000 and it said C statement one, okay? Well, that's what this is. Boom, statement one. And this is a really important one. You're gonna see a lot of interesting back office expenses on this page on any tax return. You see 16,000 and change in accounting expenses, a little over 2,000 in bank charges. You see bid expenses of about 2,300 bucks. Going through this, employee relations of about 35,000. Okay, they have their insurance here, their general insurance, their group insurance, 33,000 in legal, 102,000 in office overhead. The telephone was 13,000, 33,000 in travel. Sometimes owners will argue that travel expenses should be write-offs. Sometimes owners will argue that the 50% expense of meals should be a write-off. In this event, it's really small. It's only $1,673. Okay, but sometimes owners will put write-offs in here. Sometimes you'll also see amortization, which if you're buying a business based on EBITDA, something I don't love, earnings before interest taxes, you know, depreciation and amortization, I have a video talking about EBITDA, but sometimes you'll find amortization in this section as well, okay? So you see the, the main write-offs here, and there's some other stuff here lower, but that's pretty much that. Let's go then now to the other deductions page, okay? And this is the, 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 the part two. Uh, this is, so if we go back actually real quick, just so you understand the tie-in here, if you notice, this is statement one. Let me open this up. This is statement one. This is statement two. This is statement three, this is statement four, and then the next page is, where the hell is it? Here it is, it is statement five and statement six. Okay, easy enough. You see they gave 27,000 or basically 28,000 to charity, charitable contributions, fair play to them. You see they had 20, uh, about 22,000 in interest income. They lent money to somebody else and earned interest from lending money, right? So they have no debt, on the books as evidenced here in line 13 of the first page, no debt, no interest. They're not paying any debt because these are expenses, right? These are deductions. Remember this up here at the top was the income on the first page and these are the deductions. Okay, but over here in statement five, we see that they have interest income. So what we're seeing in this business is this is a very healthy business. I mean, here's a business, let's go big picture now, macro. In this first page, by the way, is where the majority of the information is right here. The other pages support this main page, if you will. Okay, but here's a business that in this year did 8 million in revenue, 3.8 million in gross profit, did over 2.3 million to the bottom line in ordinary business income that's taxable. Okay, that means they couldn't hide, they couldn't find more expenses anywhere. All right, very healthy business. The owner paid himself or herself over $300,000. As we saw prior, there was a healthy amount of distributions. I believe there was over half a million in distributions. Um, that was done. That's what page three here. And this is where you want to check with your CPA. But my reading of this suggests that there was $565,000 in distributions. But I would want to see if these distributions were made in prior years versus this year. This is where you want to have your accountant or your CPA walk your hand a little bit and go through some of this. Because again, I'm not a CPA. I'm an individual that buys businesses and has learned a few things about analyzing tax returns and financial documents. All right. But these distributions right here are pretty hardy of over you know, $500,000. But the biggest thing of all, if you wanna go big picture takeaway, okay, this is how I tend to look at things, is a non-CPA, non-accountant, just look at line 21, man. Right there, 2.3 million off of 8 million in sales. That is fan freaking fantastic. So to conclude, this is really, this is a great business. I would wanna buy this business if I were in this space and I'd be willing to pay you know, as much as I could within reason, I like a DSCR of about 150%. I talk more about what DSCR is and how to finance business acquisitions in other videos, but I'd be willing to pay as much as I needed to, as long as I kept that DSCR at about 150% to get this deal done. All right. If you've liked this one, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to go learn more, go to jasonpaulrogers.com. I do some consulting. I also place capital for accredited investors. If you want more information for that, go to brightutilities.com and I'll talk to you in the next video.